Ricky Whittam, who's rebuilt his bike after a pretty big prang, is still there. And much to our surprise, Whittam is back on the second row, but Reynolds still in pole, Morrison, McElnay, and the two Norton men, Reimer and Dunlop, complete the front row. It is, in fact, a depleted lineup because there are one or two non starters, but an absolutely cracking start from the second row by the number five Suzuki of Jamie Whitten, who scythes round the outside of Coppice and slots into third place behind Terry Reimer. So Jamie Whitten, number five, having survived that prank, the bike was absolutely smashed to bits and pieces, and much to our amazement, James Whitten turned up on the line. That's the only bike they've got. And Steve, a lot of work will have gone into the rebuilding of that. Yeah, there certainly will. Butch, the mechanic, will have been working frantically. It's not uh, just putting all the panel work back on. You have to check to see if the chassis is straight, if the wheels are straight. And that was a very expensive, uh, expensive crash. The bike cart wheeled and bits and pieces got busted up. So that will have been a real major... Uh, major uh, change of everything, including swinging arms, forks, and everything you can think of. Well, it doesn't seem to have dampened the ardour of Jamie Whittam, who's just slotted up into third place, splitting the two Nortons. And Robert Dunlop, number 20, challenging back on the inside as they go up towards the foot of the mountain, but Whittam going in on the brakes, and no, has to settle for fourth. Out in front, though, a really Flying start, Terry Reimer in second place. In third place, it's the Norton. Then it's Jamie Whittam, number five. Brian Morrison leads. His teammate, John Reynolds, number three, is way down in sixth place. Jamie Whittam then having a bit more of a cautious ride. I don't know if cautious is a word I can use to describe the 25-year-old flyer from Huddersfield. He and Mick Grant, the team boss, have really clicked in this 92 season. And if the Suzuki were just a little bit quicker, that's no criticism of the mechanics or indeed uh, the team itself. It's just that the, the Suzuki design is maybe just a little bit dated now. Well, this is actually their new bike, the new water-cooled bike, and I think they're still trying to develop it. They changed the machine at the beginning of this year, and you can see Rob McElney having a look. It's not that slow because McElney's Yamaha was unable to pass him up the back there, but now you can see there's John Reynolds who's sliding his way through. Number three, John Reynolds. He's just slotted up past McElney, but McElney's got the inside line. Yes, he's held it. John Reynolds has been pretty forceful there. Now he's got his sights set on number five, Jamie Whittam. But John Reynolds just doesn't seem to be able to get that Kawasaki off the line. He probably doesn't need to, the speed he's lapping at, but you can see the work he's got to do to catch Brian Morrison. He's got a lot to make up. Number three, then, in fifth place, the green Kawasaki of the man who is in second place in the championship, John Reynolds, 13 points behind Terry Reimer, number 23, the first of the two Black Nortons in this race as they rocket over the mountain. And number 46, Mark Farmer on the Roton, who had a very creditable fifth place in the first outing, is right there in the hunt as well. There's Jeremy McWilliams on the Alec Hammond Ducati, the Oxford Products bike, and having just climbed off a 250 from a good ride in the 250cc race, Jeremy McWilliams showing us just how versatile he is. Robert Dunlop, number 20. Then it's John Reynolds, number three. Then Jamie Whittam from Huddersfield on the Suzuki. Hasn't dampened his ardor one bit. His flare is just as bright as it was in leg one, leaning right off the bike and giving it 150%. Reynolds, though, in fourth place, has got Dunlop and Terry Reimer both in his sights. Yeah, well, we saw the speed before of that Kawasaki, but now he's got the Nortons to pass now. Well, we're looking at number five, Jamie Whitten, Rob McAuley, number one, right behind him. So there's a battle going on there for fifth and sixth, but John Reynolds is going to be the man, I think, charging. Whitten's style, you can see him really hanging his body off. He gets right off the machine, trying to keep it as upright as possible to give it a bit more tyre grip. Each rider has their own style, but Whitten is quite an extrovert as far as his style's concerned. Well, number three, John Reynolds, it's hard to believe that he had his first race. And number 14, a retirement there. That's Matt Llewellyn. Matt Llewellyn then from Glenfield in Leicester. So Matt Llewellyn out of it. I was about to say that number three, John Reynolds, had his first race here as short a time ago as 1987. And that was a vintage race on a 250cc Veloset. And I have to say how times have changed. Here we are, 1992. And Reynolds is on the crest of the wave at the pinnacle of his UK profession and is poised, I think, Steve, maybe 
for venturing into World Superbike. I think that's what his aim is. He'd dearly like to get into the World Superbike, and he should be in World Superbike. He is riding so well at the moment. The bike he rides, the Kawasaki, is probably the most competitive. And there he uses this inside tight line again, but I don't know if he's, he's very close. He does it just the same as he did to Brian Morrison in the first leg. He's just so quick through the Charlie spend there. So with the Nortons, he has to use his skill and expertise in the corners and under braking because he doesn't have the advantage of power over the Norton as the Norton actually is just as fast as the Kawasaki. Morrison putting in the fastest lap. Well, that's interesting because Brian Morrison leading the race, the number six rider on the other Kawasaki teammate of this man who... And that's uncharacteristic to see John Reynolds in any sort of trouble. Yeah, well, he's pushing hard. John realises that he's got a long way to go. Whilst Brian Morrison's out in front, he's got a clear road. He can put the fastest lap in, but I truly believe once John Reynolds gets into second spot, if he can pass Terry Rama, then we'll start seeing the times tumble even more. Number five, Jamie Whitton then slipping further down the field. Uh, Mark Farmer, number 46, on the Roton, has gone ahead of James and is in pursuit of this man, number one, Rob McElnay, the 1991 champion this is the duel then for second place between terry reimer who's hanging on to that second place because he needs the points and with it his championship lead and it is all about the championship for these two men the leader terry reimer on 113 points at this moment in time and the man behind him has 100 points and they are separated if all this makes sense to you by just two points in this race at this moment in time because Reimer is in a 17-point slot for second and Reynolds, number three, is in a 15-point slot for third. So this is going to go all the way to Walton Park and maybe even beyond. Who knows? Yes, to the final round of Brands But you saw there John Reynolds was unable to make up much time on number 23, Terry Reimer, down the straight. He's got to do it on the corners and he'll be pushing hard as they come down throughout through the gooseneck here. Yes, a very quick part of the course now. 120 miles now, breaking into third gear for the 80 mile an hour gooseneck. But now Reynolds has been looking at the inside line, I think. He'll be late on the brakes and he's gone through. John Reynolds, number three, nips through on the inside. A perfect manoeuvre for that Kawasaki steer. But Terry Rimer's back on the power and he has the line for the mountain section. So he's back through now. Reynolds will not be able to pass. Oh, and that's unbelievable. Nearly fetching them both off. That was a pretty silly move, I think, on John Reynolds' behalf. He went. He went round the outside of Terry Reimer, nearly brought them both off, but nevertheless, they're both safely through, and Reynolds has got through into second spot, but I wouldn't be so happy with that one. Well, dear me, we've got to settle down here because you saw that for yourselves. Reynolds is on the outside, chops back in, Terry Reimer drifting wide, and it couldn't get much more physical than that, could it? Down went Terry Reimer's left leg to keep things all in a line round the bottom of the mountain, and he won't be too thrilled and that, again, is a bit uncharacteristic of John Reynolds, who is maybe looking just a little bit desperate. Well, I think he's desperate to win the race, which he actually doesn't need to be. He, he obviously wants to be in front of Terry Reimer, and, and there's more points he can amass, the better. But he was on the outside. Terry Reimer wouldn't even have seen him there. Terry was on the line, so I would put the blame on John Reynolds, but obviously he didn't mean to do that. In motorcycle racing, you don't mean to bump into someone because it can knock you off just as easily as knocking your opponent off. Rob McElnay then is heading up a pretty frantic tussle between number 20, Robert Dunlop, and Mark Farmer on the Brian Crichton entered Roton, the number 46 bike. Mark Farmer, the Ulsterman, has really clicked with this bike. He put his leg across it at the tail end of last season just for a couple of outings, then forgot all about the bike, and since then, Brian Crichton has been doing other things with it, and he's had a variety of riders on board, including Tim Ball as the official Roton rider. But in the tail end now, the autumn really, of the 1992 season, Mark Palmer was approached again to take up the cudgel and ride the Roton. And this is the man we're talking about, number 46. And he's doing an admirable job now, closing down the factory Norton of Robert Dunlop. And I think it's fair to say at this point that they do have Norton assistance in the motor on this Roton, so there is some collaboration between the two factions, and we're seeing the end result here, very competitive rotary engine motorcycles indeed. Robert Dunlop then is looking like losing that fifth place to an extremely determined Mark Farmer. Rob McElnay, meanwhile, in fourth, the number one man, is getting away. Yeah, these two battling it out, but the engines are very similar, but the chassis is totally different on these two. One is made by Harris Performance, and uh, the other by Spontan Engineering, totally different chassis, but 
nearly doing the same job. Robert Dunlop, a great rider, and a, a, I personally put him as a 125 rider because of his size. He's very small, and this is a big, heavy machine, a very, very fast machine for a small guy to ride hard, but he does a great job. Well, the race having settled just a little bit here, and we can now see that Reynolds well past Terry Reimer, who is looking as though he might just be slipping back into the clutches now of a determined Rob McElnay number one. At the bottom of the mountain, Rob McElnay is lining up Terry Reimer. It could be that that incident with John Reynolds unsettled the 25-year-old Londoner just a little bit there because certainly he's lost his composure and almost certainly Rob McElnay is closing. He is. Now, John Reynolds is the man that really is charging. He's done a 28 7 4, so that's way under the lap record. He's really pushing hard. Obviously, determined that he doesn't want to finish second to his teammate. He wants the win as well as the points. Now we have a faller out of Coppice Corner. Well, the rider being attended to there, that's where we've had one or two incidents during the course of the afternoon. But just the yellow flag being shown, uh, that means that the riders can race on the race will go on no red flag as yet being shown although the red flag coming out down here at the finish the red flag going out the race being stopped this second 750 leg just like the first being stopped restart of the second leg of the 750s eight laps ahead of the riders then this time and poor old John Reynolds has it all to do again this is how they line up it being the places they finished in at the end of the first part, Morrison, Reynolds, Reimer, McElney, Dunlop and Mark Farmer will just about be on the second row. Uh, we're looking for a good performance from Mark Farmer because as each second goes by, he's becoming quicker and quicker and quicker on the Roton. But Morrison, the man who's got some good starts, but having said that, a cracking start from John Reynolds, number three, who made absolutely no mistake this time. Terry Reimer has gone with him on the Norton, though. Terry Reimer, number 23, slotted into second. Reynolds' teammate, Morrison, is in third. But putting this one to bed in the first 150 yards, unless any other misfortune befalls him, John Reynolds, number three, gets his nose out in front. Terry Reimer, though, seems to have got second win. The Norton was very quick there. Coming up towards Park, Terry Reimer's throw on the inside. That's given John Reynolds something to think about. Almost running wide, Terry Reimer. But putting it down really clearly from the word go, the Londoner wants to win this one. He really does, and that was a tremendous move down the inside of John Reynolds. John Reynolds being the fastest man here today. He's, uh, Terry's got the, the bit between his teeth. Reynolds looks for the inside but decides not. But in the first part of this race, these two came very close to knocking each other off. So I think maybe John Reynolds and Terry Ryan will be giving each other a little more room in this second part. That's the best start we've seen from John Reynolds all day. So, but remember, he has to get over two seconds in front of Brian Morrison to take this part of the race, this second leg. He needs to be at least two seconds in front of number six, Brian Morrison. Well, knowing Terry Reimer the way I do, and also John Reynolds, I am almost sure that they will have had quiet words with each other about the touching incident, and quite possibly an apology maybe from John as to the effect, well, I'm sorry, mate, I didn't mean to lean on you quite as much as I did. And Terry probably said something to the effect, I didn't know you were that close. But certainly, there appears to be no ill feeling. The only thing it's done for Terry Reimer has made him realise that he's got to go for it from the word go. And the Norton number 23 is leading the two Kawasaki Teamsters who have absolutely dominated 750cc racing having won twos all over the country in recent months in the UK. And these three now are pulling out ahead of Robert Dunlop, number 20. Oh, and that's Reynolds, got it all wrong there. So John Reynolds is really overcooking the job today, Steve. That's incredible. Well, this isn't doing his, doing his championships any good. He'll be keen to get back on the track, but with all the traffic there, he just went in there too hot. He went in there really, really fast. Terry Rama went out wide at that point, so he, he got offline, but that was just doing... John Reynolds is no good at all. He'd have been much better off sticking to a second spot, but he's back on the track. You see, he's coming on the inside. He's got in there too fast, much too fast. He lost the front end, then lost the rear end. Gets on the grass. At this point, there's nothing you can do, but just keep it smooth. Don't put the brakes on, don't put the power on. Just cruise as slowly as you can. You saw him come back out onto the track. John Reynolds' motocross experience stood him in good stead then because he took to the grass 
at something in excess of 80 miles an hour and managed to keep it upright and managed to get it pulled up in a straight line. Robert Dunlop, number 20. Rob McElnay, number one. Then it's Jamie Whittam, number five, on the Suzuki. Then pushing hard, that's number 30. And that's Sean Emmett. So Sean Emmett from Camberley on the yellow bike behind Jamie Whittam. Having adapted to the 750 very quickly, Sean Emmett rides the 600cc super sport machine with equal prowess. But my goodness me, he's going well here. He's in hot company too, mixing it with the very best in the country. Robert Dunlop in fourth place. Ahead of him, reigning champion Rob McElnay, whose title, and I have to be fair, is now slipping away from him. It doesn't look as though Rob McElnay is going to retain that number one plate for the 1993 season. He'll be carrying something less conspicuous, I think. But look at Morrison. Morrison, number six, now closing on the number 23 Norton of Terry Reimer. Norton lead, Norton third, and right in the middle, Kawasaki. Once again, Brian Morrison doesn't actually have to be in front on the road. He's leading the race on aggregate. He's quite happy to sit behind Terry Rama. He will win the second leg here today by just doing that. But I'm not sure what went on. I think uh, Ron Williams from the Norton team must have made some adjustments to Terry Rama's bike. It's looking much better. They have a modified suspension system on it now, which they call a reactive suspension, and it's acting like a, a double spring effect so that the machine doesn't squat so much at the rear. And during the stoppage, there's a possibility that they made some adjustments on this bike. But Morrison's the man now. He's very, very close to Terry Ryan, but he won't pass him on the straight, I don't believe. Now, the computer here telling us that John Reynolds, number three, is still motoring on down in seventh place. Well, if we can get that confirmed, we'll bring it to you. So, number three, Reynolds, still going well. And if he's down in seventh, which he appears to, judging by the computer, then he is still in with a chance. Reimer then scorching through. Number 23, what a brilliant piece of luck and i think one man's misfortune is another man's good fortune in motorcycle racing and earlier on terry reimer who finished sixth in the british grand prix at his first attempt with a, a true 500 cc grand prix bike was quoted as saying well okay maybe i'd have been happy with ninth but i got sixth by virtue of the fact that three other people fell off steve that's all in the game very much so, and you have to cross the line to finish the race, and that's what it's all about. I mean, if, if you're easier on your machine and not as hard and uh, more sympathetic with the machine, then, uh, then you can sometimes finish the race, and that's what it's all about. You have to be consistent as well as being fast. This little battle now between Robert Dunlop, number 20, and Jamie Whittam hotting up because right with them too is number 46, Mark Farmer. There he is on the Roton, so Mark Farmer getting his act together well and truly. And I think that maybe we could well see the number 20 Norton go under the hammer of the 28-year-old Farmer from Crawley in Sussex, and Dunlop almost on the grass. Mark Farmer in the slipstream of the factory. Norton is on the inside, having a good hard look at Coppice with three and a little bit laps to do. Now, they're coming on to the faster part of the circuit. Let's see what the Roton has to offer. He's going round the outside. That's a bold attempt in the slipstream now behind the factory Norton. And Robert Dunlop's bike is very quick, but look at Mark Farmer too. Yeah, there's very little difference in the speed. I would say that the Norton still just has the edge, but uh, probably that's a lot to do with the fact that uh, Robert Dunlop, such a small guy, he probably only weighs about eight stone, and the uh, power-to-weight ratio does come into it a great deal. You can see Jamie Whittam's style there, number five, again, really hanging off the machine, flicking it left through the gooseneck. 85, 90 mile an hour, accelerating hard down here to Mansfield, breaking down into second gear, 60 miles an hour, hard on the gas at this point. Suzuki underneath Jamie Whittam, absolutely wringing its neck. James squeezing the throttle as hard as he can to get every inch of power as he soars over the mountain with a magnificent wheelie down towards Hall Benz. Right, left, and right again. And the tightest and slowest part of the circuit, the hairpin, about 25 miles an hour around there. That's pretty tight. And down then to Barn, which is the adverse camber corner under the tree. Sometimes gets just a little bit damp. And then the start-finish line ahead of them. Still a scrap raging behind Jamie Whittam between Mark Farmer and Robert Dunlop.
Sean Emmett then is behind Farmer, then Jeremy McWilliams, number 10, is also well placed. So the Ducati that Williams is on, bellowing its way around the Cadwell Park circuit. These two rotary engine bikes giving us a bit of activity in fourth and fifth places, respectively. Style there again, you see the whole body leaning off that machine. Really gets his weight on the inside, tries to keep the bike more upright. Totally different styles, you can see the Robert Dunlop behind who just puts his knee out. And this is the point in the circuit where Whitam had his little moment earlier on in the day, went across the grass there, but he's left himself plenty of room at this point. Extremely late on the brakes, James Whitam. It's his, uh, he excels on braking late. Fourth place then, number five. So the caption already out of date by the time it came up. Jamie Whitam had scooped past the two rotary engines, the Norton and the Roton. So Whittam then is in fourth place behind number one, Rob McElney. Jamie Whittam, number five, on the Suzuki. So the caption, of course, giving us the aggregate. My apologies. This, the position on the road. Tremendous ride by Whittam. Terry Reimer still leaving Morrison in his wake. Jamie Whitton ahead of the Norton and the Roton, who are closing up again on the Suzuki rider. Those six are beginning to open out. Jamie Whitton looking just a little bit ragged again. Well, Jamie always, he says himself, he looks a little dangerous, and he certainly did. He came out of Barn Corner there, leaving a huge black line as he got that Suzuki sliding sideways. And, ah, and you can see the speed now. Robert Dunlop's Norton just passes Jamie Whitton like he's standing still. There's 10 miles an hour difference there. Robert Dunlop's now nipped past Jamie Whitton, which will help on aggregate's overall position. Dunlop still having to work hard to shake off Jamie Whitton, who's giving the crowd here something to thrill about. They've had one or two delays in the proceedings for the afternoon stoppages, and that's Reynolds again. So John Reynolds' race is very definitely over this time. That has left the championship wide open for the number 23 Norton rider, Terry Reimer. Not a happy day for John Reynolds, having taken the first leg, but things went very wrong for him, Steve, in the second leg. Just a little bit, maybe, over-ambitious. Whittam going through again ahead of Robert Dunlop. Not giving an inch, Jamie Whittam. Knows he has everything to go for and wants to improve his point standings in the town. He has, of course, to all the other riders. Jamie certainly gives it 110% and he's pushing. Look at the distance he's made up on Robert Dunlop through the twisty sections there. But unfortunately, I think he's going to lose all that. Robert Dunlop now on the start and finish straight, reaching speeds of about 160 before they break in. Paul Coffey's corner, but look, he's closed that gap in already and now he's going to close it in on the start and on the main straight. And I think he'll perhaps nip back past Jamie Whittam. Whittam will use all the track he can, but on the straights, there's nothing you can do. Factory Norton versus the Roton. And Jamie Whittam on the blue Suzuki on the left-hand side, but the two rotary bikes went past on sheer power. And this is Whittam on the brakes. Look at Mark Farmer, number 46, went in there really hot and deep, but he's managed to pull that one off really well. That elevates Farmer to fourth place. Number 46, Mark Farmer then, has rocketed into fourth. There's Rob McElnay, number one. There's Mark Farmer in fourth. And that is a terrific result. If he could just hang on to this, there's about half a lap left to do. Steve, what about that? He's getting better by the end. Yeah, and that didn't do Jamie Whittam any good. I think that took him by surprise as Mark went straight by the two of them. So that's uh, that's a great move by Mark Farmer. Now there's absolutely no chance they can get back past him. There's no passing places left. The only chance I think Jamie Whittam has here is at the hairpin. If he's going to pass Robert, Robert Dunlop, he could just do it at the hairpin, but that's his only chance. The checkered flag in sight then for Terry Reimer. He'll be thrilled with this one. Reimer gets it from Morrison on the Kawasaki. A great ride for Terry Reimer. Rob McElney gets third. Mark Farmer gets fourth. And Robert Dunlop just pips Jamie Whittam for fifth. But a brave, brave ride for Jamie Whittam for sixth place. But there's your winner, 23 on the Norton. Terry Reimer will hang on to the championship lead. Overall winner on aggregate, however, of the two legs, John Reynolds' teammate, Brian Morrison on the Kawasaki, number six. He'll be well pleased with his day's work here at Cadwell.
after another sensational two-part 750cc race. The overall result went to Brian Morrison, number six, from Terry Reimer on the Norton, McElnay, Farmer, Dunlop and Jamie Whittam. And, of course, John Reynolds didn't feature because he retired in part two. Now, what does that do to the championship standings? Could it be that John Reynolds has kissed the title goodbye? Who knows? But 130 points, the Norton man leads Morrison from...